2023 presidential aspirants continues to grow. So this course on what they can bring to the table is expanding as part of the conversation towards the best option for the country next year. The senator representing Imo West at the National Assembly and the presidential aspirants on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Rochas Okorocha, speaks with journalist hangout on the on national issues and 2023 presidential race. But first, let's hear from him. What prompted him to join the race? The mood of our nation today calls for a leader in 2023 that can unite this country and give everybody a sense of belonging. If I say I will unite this country, believe me, I will do so. I'm not saying I will, I will. I'm saying I've done that already. There's no part of this country or zone you will go without seeing my signature. And I challenge all those coming to contest with me to show what they have done in uniting this country. Not I will. Our proper business shall be business of development and improvement. In the times of peace, we shall advance the art of peace and the works of peace. We shall cut forth our land and develop the resources of our land. The new Nigeria basically is meant to help the poor, the needy, the downtrodden, and ensuring that our leaders and those who are privileged are not let alone. The new Nigeria shall write the principles of democracy, and we shall no longer define democracy as the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Wow, Senator Ruchas Okorocha, Okorocha there. And um, Julie, let, let's first of all just look at his um, emergence. People are coming out now. Yes. And now more, more and more people need to come out. So mm -hmm. We are happy to see people come out. Let people show us what they've got. Let mm -hmm. people tell us why they think they are good enough to, to rule us. Because Abraham Lincoln said, no man is good enough to govern another person without the person's consent. Now, mm -hmm. let them sh come out and show us that they are good enough. And Nigerians will be able to make a choice mm -hmm. in 2023. And hopefully, that choice will be the best uh, for our people. Yes, I want to align with that. I think um, the more the merrier. It's important for us to have options so that we'll be able to look at the candidates and what they are bringing to the table. And um, some people have been agitating that um, if, we are if we are going to look at fairness, that we should also con consider people from the southeast. So Okorocha com Senator Okorocha coming out is, 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 is good. But like Jide said, what is important is what they can offer us as leaders. OK. So joining us is a senator representing Imo West, senatorial district in the National Assembly, Owili Ruchas Okorocha. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Oh, All right. Distinguished senator, now, you recently asked Nigerians to let you be the pilots of the nation from 2023. What makes you think you are the best for the job? Sure. Um, last Monday I had my press presidential uh, okay. um, press conference okay. to contest a oh, presidential yeah. election. But that, that was not my first time, and that's not my first time of coming out to run for the office of the president. The first time was uh, 20 years ago, in 2001, when I declared to run for the office of the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thereafter, I had a second attempt uh, at the, during the PDP era that, made me, that saw me came second to president, Yeradua of blessed memory. The third one was when I ran under the APC. And all this has been going on. And this one I did the last Monday was my 
will be my fourth time of telling Nigerians, listen, I want to leave this country. The question, like you have asked, will be why the persistence? Why, why this continuous desire to leave this country? It's born out of my passion and vision to make this country great. Uh, I am concerned about my nation and I'm concerned about the ugly situation which our condition points out to us. So the, this whole thing is about my genuine concern to um, give my nation a more visionary and purposeful leadership that can make Nigeria great. I have found out that my own quiet time, I've asked myself a question, what are really the problems bothering our people? Or what are the things that are bothering the citizens of this country? And I've come to classify them into three categories. One is uh, in the bid for drum, drumming for secession, bacchanalization of Nigeria. Nigeria requires a leader who can bring everyone together, give everybody a sense of belonging, and unite this country. So unity of this country is very key, and that's where I find myself and f as fit and proper person who can unite this country. Because when I say I unite Nigeria, I'm not just making a theoretical statement. It's something I've done, I'm something I'm doing. So I'm not in the business of I will, I will uh, make Nigeria one, I will unite Nigeria. I've been doing that. I have said several that there's no part of this country you go without seeing my handwork, or what I call my signature. I'm drawn from Northwest in Sokoto, um, Zaria, Kano, you see Rocha Sokrocha. Go to the North Central in Joss, you see Rocha Sokrocha. You go to Northeast in Bauchia and Adamao, you see Rocha Sokrocha. Go to Southwest Ibadan, you see Rocha Sokrocha. Southeast Enugu, Were, many of them, and South South of recent in Calabar. So when I talk about being uh, someone who can unite this country, there's a track record. I'm talking about track record. Secondly, this nation at the mood we are, not 20 years ago and not 40 years come, requires a compassionate leader that will have pity on the poor and who will be sensitive to the sufferings of the people. If I say that also, that I'm, I'm a fit and proper person, that also I'm right, because I've demonstrated compassion for the poor and the needy that you hear about Rochester Foundation College in the Northwest, in the North Central, in Northeast, South, South, Southwest, Southeast. I don't know those children. I don't know where they come from. What joins me and them is poverty, is, is sympathy and empathy uh, for them to, to rediscover who they are. So in terms of having that heart for the ordinary person, I can assure you I will. Uh, the other issue will be the issue of uh, economy of our country. Until the issue of economy is addressed, you must be talking about uh, insecurity and uh, joblessness. They're all one. So what do we need? We need a core businessman with business experience who can make nothing out of nothing, who can create wealth, engage our youth, build our economy. But this then there'll be no all. restiveness. There'll be no insecurity. Let me just so this is my style. Let me quickly this is precisely why I'm coming out today on this. Yes. Been seeking the presidency for some time. How? Have the past failures prepared you for a better outing this time? Well, I, I must say is the is some experience acquired somehow. Um, the first time I ran for president, I was barely 40 years of age. Of course, I think I was 39 plus then when I declared to be a president of this country. And uh, I went around this country and uh, I found that I had a, a huge followership uh, in this country. But at that time, my primary challenge was the same issue of uh, where you come from. At the time I, 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 I ran for that party under MPP, it was agreed that the presidential, uh, the leaders a day before the primaries said that it must go to the north. That saw me that. Second one with Yeradua, power was still with President Obasanjo, and he had just finished. He's about to finish when we're contested. Again, zoning was the challenge, and, and President Yeradua again won. Uh, and then in APC also, 
it was the same thing. We agreed that power should go to the north. Um, uh, that was, has always been my challenge. But in all this, it has made me transvert across the various ethnic groups, the uh, tribes, and religion, and getting to understand Nigerians as wonderful, beautiful people that really are yearning for a leadership that can, that can, if you like, help their situation. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. And, and Nigerians uh, really uh, are good people for what I've seen. But those who have not been able to interact with Nigerians think that Nigeria is really uh, separated all that. The same feeling, the same people, the same wonderful people. So I'm, I'm prepared, I'm prepared, I'm prepared. So um, what in your view is the biggest problem confronting Nigeria? And what ideas are you bringing to the table to solve the problem? Well, that's a very complex question. But let me give you the summary. Sometimes um, if you ask Nigerians what, or leaders, what is the problem in Nigeria, they will tell you insecurity. They will tell you poverty. They will tell you electricity. If you give us power, we're fine. They will tell you literacy constitutes the major problem. They will say health care. Some will even say infrastructure, road network. But those are symptoms and not disease. The disease that is affecting this nation is vision and passion, which, is, which, which are the two things that a leader must possess and depend on the quantum and capacity that he, he, he has them. But that's the problem. So what people talk as clearly as a problem is the symptoms. It's just like when you are uh, suffering from diabetes and you have, uh, and your, your, your sugar has gotten to the island of Langer Hands where, where it has become a major problem. Then you are still treating the sores on your foot and the headache that you have. You are just mainly plastering until you address the disease, the causative, and not the effect they will not be talking. So the problem with Nigeria is inability to acquire sufficient vision to manage the human and material resources in our land. That is where it is. That's the major problem confronting our country. And not that we don't have the human resources, we'll have them in surpluses. Not that we'll have, we don't have material, we'll have them a lot of it. But ability to harness this to better the lives, the loss of the people is our, our, our big challenge. Uh, in, in a similar question you might ask, that is why sometimes when I see people come up on television to say, I, I, I constructed this road, I did this, uh, I, I built this hospital, I built this, which some of us, I do say that, but I tell them that is not achievement because it's simply a product of cashierism. Uh, if you have enough money and you become a cashier and somebody, even if you put a child 15 years and give him a car by red by red, what contract? We're talking about vision now. It's the same vision we're talking about. And until Nigerians begin to identify what is called vision and passion in a leader, they will not be making headway. And how do you understand the vision of somebody? Is this literacy from his track records? What he's be able to do? But that we don't do. So what I'm bringing to bear is vision, backed up with passion, love for the country, which, which I think I, I have uh, for this country, and I think I have the vision for this country. Now, Senator, do you think you have enough cross-country support for this project in terms of acceptance across the board? I do, I do. To check for the Northwest, any, any, any typical Nigerian from Northwest will want to give me his support because they will understand that I've shown enough passion, love for the people of Northwest. And, and they will agree with you, even in the Northeast or North Central, even in Southwest. Uh, sometimes I, I tell, uh, there's no reason why a South person will not give me support. Today is on record that I have trained well over 5,000 indigenous children of the Yoruba uh, indigenous, or indigenous. And, and this, to me, they are my children, so I'm one of them. Well, why would they want to support me? Or would it be the Igbos or the South South? So um, I think my track record speaks for myself, uh, for me, and what I've done speaks for me. 
Uh, this is why I think I, I enjoy that. I'm, I'm also I understand the culture, the tradition of the people because I've interacted with them. But let me tell you something that might not might shock you this this this, this evening is that I I uh, what runs through me is an Igbo blood. I'm a full-fledged Igbo man. I'm very proud of it. But I will tell you that what I became, what, what I became today is courtesy of the North. My education, my upbringing, my whole childhood, my livelihood is the entire North. But, but what made me a, what you could call a wealthy person or a, somebody of means is my contact with the uh, Yoruba person. So if I didn't have that partnership with the Yoruba man, I wouldn't have been the richest that can own a home, own a car, or even for this election. So I have made a vow that I cannot hate my origin. Neither will I bite the fingers of the North that educated me, or bite the fingers of the West that empowered me. So Nigeria is my constituency. And, and, and I make boast to say that nobody can claim to be a Nigerian more than Rocha Sokrocha himself. See, uh, <clears throat> Let us talk about your party, the APC. There are internal squabbles here and there within the APC. Don't you think these divisions are capable of derailing even the capacity of the APC to retain power? Much more have someone like you elected uh, on the platform of the party. Um, um, what you told you? Hello. Yeah, I, I can, we can hear you. We can hear you. We're trying to establish contact with him. I think he, there's this clarity of what he wants. Mm. And um, we, this is now time. I think Nigeria, we need to scrutinize whoever is coming out. Yes. We've left that era of um, whatever this person we... Uh, we want to follow him, but we have to scrutinize and ask necessary questions so that we won't find ourselves, we won't make the mistake we've ma made in the past. Yes, and um, he's telling us why he thinks he's good enough uh, for the job. And that's what we expect um, We're going to challenge all of them. others to do as mm -hmm. well. Don't um, say you want to be president and be scared to talk to the Nigerian people. Mm. You've got to tell the Nigerian people you, 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 you what, avoid what, debates, what you what you debates. Don't run away you. from a debate. Mm -hmm. We want to hear from you. We want debate. to know you. What you've got to offer. Mm. You know? One thing so you have to give Senator Korocha is um, it seems to be it seems to have a clear of vision of what he wants to achieve. He's ready to to, to tell us his track record. Though most of his achievements that, um, according to him, qualify him to be able to be the captain of the Nigerian project has to do more about Rocha Sokosha Foundation. Mm -hmm. I think uh, so the Senator is back now. Okay, yes. Senator. Can you hear us now? Yes. Okay. okay. Did you hear my question? I can, or you I can, I can you hear the question. Did you, would you want me to... No, I heard you very loud and clear. Okay, great. So I, I don't need to repeat the question. Okay, go on. Now, you're talking about the party. Yes. Uh, uh, APC is um, a party that came together to, to if you like, uh, terminate the tenure of the other party the PDP, when we felt that PDP was not living up to its expectations. And all of us were involved in this. But it's good to remind uh, all of you that this APC is a party standing on four major legs. One, the CPC leg, um, brought by our dear president, President Mohamed Buhari. The second leg is the ACN leg brought by Aswaju Ahmed Tenebu and the AMPP leg brought by some of the leaders of AMPP and ABGA brought by myself. So these are the four legs upon which say, this party were built. And uh, we had an understanding that we work together as a team, as members of one family. But we seem to be having some form of challenge now 
that what I call political intruders who came with a congratulatory message, congratulators, have now become the landlords. And so the basic, who doesn't understand how the party was formed and the principles, the guiding principles for the party. We have that challenge, but I hope to the convention coming up, these things will all be corrected and be fixed so that our party can be strong once more and rid of this perceived internal crisis. What is happening to our party is mainly because our party uh, uh, does not seem to uh, handle their internal affairs on, on free and fair uh, uh, positions. Uh, you see so many internal crises, prim I mean, co Congress problems here and there. I, I pray it does not happen during the national convention. So the 26th of um, February is a decider for the fate of this party. But I pray that uh, it will go well. And I, I have every confidence that it, it will go well. From there, we might start building the party within the short time available. Why did you choose to declare your interest on the floor of the Senate instead of going to President Buhari like um, the, your fellow aspirants? Well, that's my primary constituency. I have to inform my home. The Senate is my home. I have to inform my home and say, listen, gentlemen, I'm one of you. Uh, I want to be running for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which I've done. And I also have gone again to inform Mr. President that, Mr. President, I want to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So it's, it's a step thing. I mean, uh, what is important is that Mr. President is like, he's the leader of the party, he's the father of the party. Everyone must tell him. Uh, but it's, it's better, first of all, you tell your family, uh, tell your uh, children and wife that look, I'm going for I want to go for national service. Then tell your immediate constituency. Then you climb in that order and then tell Mr. President for his fatherly blessings. Let us go to Imo State now, your states. What would you describe as your biggest um, achievement as the governor of Imo State, and how do you intend to replicate that at the national level? Well, like I said, most of the time in this country. We're proud with uh, how we spend government money. I think what we should say that how do you spend the government money given to you? I mean, maybe you say I'm honest to it, I did a lot. Uh, Imo State, during my tenure, may have uh, collected a sum of about uh, 500 billion naira for that eight years. Approximately, you can't be specific. And out of this, I'm sure 75% of them went in for salaries and uh, pensions and what have. So if you're asking me, if you're asking me what did I do with about 140, 150 billion in Imo State, and as you walk through the roads of Imo State, you will see it in the International Cargo Airport, you see it in the new police headquarters, the new court complex, one of the best, the new government house, the International Conference Center, the Ikembo Juku Center, the traditional council, the eight lane roads that I about know that opened up the entire of Fawere. You see it in the 37 general hospitals. You see it in the 546 schools built. You see it in the over 1,000 kilometers of rural roads built. You, you see it in the 27 chapels, 27 ICT centers. You, you, you see it uh, in the two stadia built in Imo State. Uh, so a lot of the project, but that is what I call cashierism, telling more people that I spend your money well for you. But I'm talking about vision now. Uh, what is my greatest achievement will be the free education that automatically changed the school enrollment from 237,000 children in school, primary school and secondary school, to close to one million children before I left. And there was free education from primary to second to university, enticing children to come back with salaries and free uniform, free lockers, everything. That was what I could call as achievement. Another achievement would be my ingenuity of it must work. Where work became compulsory, and I had 20, over 25,000 youths engaged as a result into security, teaching, and all that. And another achievement of mine is the introduction of volunteerism for retired teachers and retired civil servants to go back and be useful to their society 
without counting cost of return. And I built the elders' uh, center, what I call senior citizen center in Nemo, for the first time. Because some of them were languishing and dying in the village, especially at that age when wife is old and children are all out. Again, another ingenuity that I would consider ingenuity is the CGC, Community Government Council. For me, that was a masterpiece where I defined democracy as the government of the people, for the people, of the people, but with the people. The with the people is a traditional rulers. I brought them into play. That's how we're able to ensure security in Imo State, be able to maintain schools without coming back to government to fix falling, falling roofs of primary school and secondary school. And the children were used were engaged right at the rural level. And we have what is called Imo Security Network. And taking uh, 11, 11 young men from every community. And we had more than 700 communities. And they were all working. Then the other one is uh, pardon and return of arms, where we brought young men that brought back their arms in exchange for a uh, job. Those are what I call ingenuity. And then, of course, I introduced the first urban renewal in that city that changed the two lane roads to, two lane roads to four lanes and four lane roads to eight lanes. And, and so a lot was done in Imo State uh, in the history. No, Senator, fair enough. Uh, staying with Imo State, what is responsible for the fact that yourself and the incumbent governor, Senator Hope Uzodima, are at loggerheads at this time? What, what's, what are you quarreling about? I don't know. Uh, I, told you, I think I should ask, ask people that question. I don't know. Because if I know, I'll give an answer. But what, if you ask me, what do I suspect? Uh, there's nothing other than I think there's some kind of hate, natural hate and envy. Um, I, don't, I don't even have nothing to disagree yeah. with, with uh, uh, Governor Hope, who's a deep man. I don't think of anything, honestly. But some people tell me that, uh, uh, that he's being used by those who, who wants to hold things and a threat for the presidential aspiration and those who brought him from number four to number one. Uh, that's the reason. He says, says, Senator, he says you, you've been governor for eight years and you see behave as if you are the current um, governor. Have you been <laughs> made any serious efforts in reconciliation with the governor? That you still want to continue to dominate uh, this place as, as if you are still the governor? He's state. saying that you are still carrying on like as if you, no, are, you are the incumbent governor. Since you are ah, saying you don't know the source right. of the conflict, uh, well, <laughs> we are trying well, to. I don't even go to Imo State. Last time I was in Imo was this December. So I, I don't think so. Um, but I, I, there's nothing actually. I, I, I'm not doing anything. What would I have done? I don't even talk. I don't say a word in Imo State. I'm here busy with my challenges of life. I don't think it is so. Either there's this imaginary thing I think he's imagining. Uh, but of course, you see that a lot of things has happened in the Imo state, ranging from shooting of my son-in-law, uh, uh, shooting him, he almost got killed, the destruction of my wife's uh, properties, the molestation of my wife and my daughter, the abduction of Uche Mwosu and the church saga. So many things has happened. But in all this, I've never reacted one day or do anything because I love peace. But I don't know, but I hope very soon I hope that man will come to realize that I'm not his problem. Our, our party leaders and elders tried to reconcile both of you. Have, have, have they made efforts? Because we're in the same party, for God's sake. Well, the, 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 the last time we had was when governors, governor of Nasrawa, governor of uh, Plateau, governor of uh, Kiti, and governor of... Um, um, Jigawa, I think, Anasarawa, Plateau, Ekiti. They called us for a meeting in Plateau House as chairman with the governor. That was the time I saw him. And I, I asked him a question, what do you, what do, can I do for you for us to have peace? The, he, took an, he took an undertaking that day that he's going to fix everything. Everything is gone. There's no going to be any problem. I said, are you sure? You know, I hope I don't trust you. Can you tell them the truth? What do you really want? I said, OK, I have a judgment. Uh, for the for the elected um, uh, party 
uh, officials of the state. They have a judgment that is up to court of appeal that has not been obtained. You suspend, you disobey that court judgment and put in an, a new ESCO. I said, can we just now share the ESCO even? Take some and give this boy, or take all of them and give these boys, they are moving by force, give them some appointment. Take the state, you are the, you are the father of the state now. Take, I don't want. But accommodate those boys. He said they should give him one week. He's going to make sure he either dissolve his own and get these people appointed so that later his own people can be chairman. I said, go. These are your, your children. Go ahead with it. He didn't do that. And he promised the committee that he is going to collect the report of the panel, which was set up by the PDP. And I told him that PDP government cannot set a favorable panel. It will be biased. You can't set somebody that I defeated in my local government, make him chairman of my panel to investigate me. He will never, he will never say the truth. So he promised those people, and that when he goes back, he will uh, suspend any more, any more the, the investigation. Senator. And that if he's going to set it up, the he's going senator. to get uh, are, the senator. somebody uh, very neutral. There's no time. You have been, you have been accused of so sponsoring violence that. in your own state. Felt. Yes. Why will you, why will you make your own state ungovernable? Because they are, they are even accusing you of being they are behind. Accusing you of sponsoring violence. Your non government. <laughs> and they say you are the godfather of unknown government. I, I, I think you want to hear something from me. This is <laughs> this is journalism. Well, let me tell you, it could have been true. Yeah. Why would I be to 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 sponsor unknown government? Rather, oh, it has been proven now that uh, is uh, Mr. Governor that has what is called Hopism Strike Force, comprising of uh, his CSO and uh, some civilians and some military that he put together in government house to create the havoc they have. And what was the last straw that broke the camera's back was the abduction of Uche Mosu by this same CSO, mm -hmm. who took some policemen and, uh, and some civilians and went to the church, shooting sporadically and abducting Uche Mosu. Thank God that the IG finally arrested the CSO. He's been arrested. And, uh, but oh, so the, so the statement he made. Oh, so the, so the, so the, so the, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, Senator representing Imo West Senatorial District.